Last week, we heard of Israel's plea for deliverance, and Isaiah spoke on behalf of God, reassuring Israel for a better future. We heard of the comfort and joy that holding hands brings, and we were reassured that God holds our hands every day. Now, we have finally made it to the New Testament in our scripture readings, where the deliverance's arrival is soon. Our scripture reading this weekend comes from the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew was written to a mostly Jewish audience whose hope for the future was dim. The world was in ruins with the fall of the temple, but God was still at work. I invite our readers to come forward. Today we hear about Joseph's plans and hopes for the future because his future was crushed when he learned that his fiancée Mary was pregnant. Joseph knew he was not the father. The hope for Matthew's readers, for Joseph, and for us is revealed through fulfilled prophecy. Listen as we hear about Joseph's dilemma and how God had been at work all along and is still at work today. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a religious man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But when he had resolved to do this. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Which means? God, God is, is with, with us. us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. He, did no marital, he had no marital relations with her until she had become born a son, and he named him Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Years ago, I remember the great fad of baby naming books. Once you found out you were pregnant, you either went and bought one or two of these or someone gifted you one. The books contained multiple suggestions for the spelling of a child's name, and it offered the root origin and meaning of each name to assist expected parents in the naming of their child. Anyone out there use one of these books? Of course. A child would be given a special name. A person, the pregnant mom and the dad-to-be, could spend hours and days, weeks, months, really the whole pregnancy, looking for the perfect name for this unborn child. Now, I love to hear stories about why names are chosen. Perhaps it was a family name to be carried along, or maybe a character in a book or a movie or a TV program sparked your interest. Maybe the parents wanted something totally new and unique, something that hasn't been heard in a while. Or perhaps they thought about something easy to spell and to teach your child to write. Regardless, many times the story behind the name, it's a special meaning of some fashion. So I have you keep this in mind today when we think of the name Jesus, meaning God saves. And Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. In today's world of pregnancy and expectant waiting, gender reveal parties are a big thing. 
Pink or blue confetti explodes from popped balloons. The color of cake beneath delicious frosting. Or colored smoke fired from a cannon. And even corn reveals a baby's gender. In this photo, it's a girl. These reveals are likely fun to plan, and they're exciting to witness. And perhaps the real surprise these days is that the parents-to-be are not telling you the name of their babies until the baby is born. Now, as an unwed woman at the time of my pregnancy, my only pregnancy, I kind of feel like I can relate to Mary's situation a little bit, except for the whole part about the being conceived by the Holy Spirit and a virgin birth. I cannot relate to that. But I can tell you that Mary probably felt similar to me. I was consumed with anxiety and fear. Can I provide for this child? I'm not married. What if the baby's father doesn't want to be with me anymore or help support this child? What are our parents going to say? How do we tell them? What will my friends think? I'm going to gain a lot of weight, and I'm going to need some new clothing. I like pickles a lot. I sure hope I don't crave them with ice cream. How will I get through this? The fear and excitement of my pregnancy left me toiling for some time. Now, as I dwelt in the scripture reading for today, I realized that Matthew's perspective on the virgin birth is not from a female's point of view at all. It's not from Mary's point of view. It's Joseph's story, and it's Joseph's toiling that we read about. I realize that I don't know what it's like to be a dad-to-be. And in this case, poor Joseph, well, he wasn't expecting to be a father either. He knew this child was not his. So in my own toiling, I decided I should interview some men. I wanted to interview some men about their personal experiences with fatherhood and their view of this story in Scripture. So here's what the men told me. I wasn't married to my girlfriend when she told me she was pregnant. I was scared to death. We were so young. I feared telling our parents and what other people might think. I instantly had a greater responsibility with this news. How could I finish college and take care of a family? Should I propose to my girlfriend? I don't have the money to buy her a ring. Well, and that might be kind of foolish because we should really start saving for diapers. I can only imagine the questions rolling through Joseph's head. He probably didn't sleep for days. And the responses from the men continued. I was excited about being a part of bringing a child into the world. But I was still a bit nervous. I'd always hoped to be a dad. But I was so afraid during the whole pregnancy. What if something went wrong? As the pregnancy progressed, I felt so alone. I couldn't really relate to my wife's weight gain or her swollen ankles. I just hoped she'd get back to her usual self after the baby was born. How the heck did Mary handle it over 2,000 years ago? And yet more. I was livid. I thought for sure my girlfriend was cheating on me. I bet Joseph felt the same way. I mean, come on, God is the father? I think Joseph was totally wanting to ditch her, but he didn't want to look like the bad guy. And yet more. When I met my son, there was no question. I knew he was mine. We'd been trying for a long time, and it just wasn't happening. We were devastated, but we still longed to be parents. Adoption was our last option. Could we love someone else's child as much as we would love the one we created on our own? We waited a long time. I didn't believe her when she told me she was pregnant. I think I was in denial most of the pregnancy. But meeting my daughter 
was a huge reality check. I didn't think I could fall so in love with a tiny little baby. Another man. I have one son. He's a miracle. And Jesus is the miracle the world needed. I guess, another man says, I guess Joseph was technically a stepdad like me. But honestly, being a dad is my greatest accomplishment. It doesn't matter that the kids aren't biologically mine. Through my conversations with these men, I could hear the joy and I could see the relief on their faces and I could hear some of the fear that they had experienced and described. The emotion behind their voices and on some of their faces was amazing to witness. The love for their children was evident and they were in awe of their partner's strength and courage throughout pregnancy and delivery. Now, I think we all can relate a little bit either to Mary or to Joseph. Maybe some of us know what it's like to have an unplanned pregnancy and have plans interrupted. But in our story today, we hear something a little different, and it's kind of confusing. Did you catch where it said that Joseph was Mary's husband? And it said that they were engaged but not living together? That's all some confusing language for me. So, Joseph is engaged to Mary. And he's probably been anticipating their official marriage and life together when he learned that Mary was pregnant. Now, the Jewish tradition of marriage has three parts, and this will help clear up some of the confusion. First, their families agree on the union. And secondly, they would publicly announce their engagement. It would be called the betrothal at this point. And third, the official marriage with the couple beginning to live together. Now, it sounds a bit like our traditional pattern of marriage. Date, get engaged, get married, then live together with babies coming later. But in the Jewish tradition, the engagement or betrothal is more so like an actual marriage. It's a year-long process in which at any time the husband, the man, could decide to divorce his wife or if there was death during that time, there would be no marriage. So, before the husband and wife were married, there was no consecration of marriage and there was no consummation of marriage. The engagement could only be broken through death or divorce. And Joseph, he would have had the right to divorce Mary in this case, which would have led to public humiliation for Mary and being stoned to death, not to mention loss of a baby. We see Joseph's great dilemma. We're not told of his feelings at all, and he never speaks in this story. We're simply left to assume how he might feel. Joseph really had two choices, continue in the relationship or divorce Mary. It appears his mind was made up, as we read, Joseph, being a righteous man, had planned to dismiss her quietly. But, but God intervened. God intervened through the voice of an angel. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph's response to the angel's message, it's Hallmark movie material. Joseph's fatherly instincts kicked in with the angel's voice of reassurance. And with the gender reveal and the name of Mary's child, I can't help but think that the love in Joseph's heart was ignited in that moment. And a fire began to blaze, consuming whatever ill emotions or concerns lingered within Joseph. Joseph instantly responded and he married Mary they refrained from consummating the marriage, to which 
was essential in order for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. It looks like God's been at work the whole time. God's people had been waiting a long time for the arrival of the said Messiah. The prophesied Savior's arrival was revealed to the world when the Virgin Mary gave birth, and his name revealed much about him. Emmanuel, God is with us. God came to us to dwell with us on earth, both divine and human, as Jesus, to save us. God's love is so amazing that the long-awaited Messiah arrived in the most unexpected way, through ordinary people going about their own business and plans, through the vulnerability of a precious little baby, through virgin birth. The long-awaited Messiah arrived. Emmanuel, God is with us. Jesus, the Son of God, the greatest gift given to the world, is the gift that we have with us each day. For through Jesus, we have the gift of our sins permanently forgiven, forever washed away. And we have the promise of his return that is yet to be revealed to us. Now, Joseph's courageous action in taking Mary as his wife, rejecting the fear within inside himself, is an action that speaks much louder than any words he could have spoken. His righteousness and faithfulness to God's message, not only of the reassurance of do not be afraid, but also of the gender revealing, and the naming of Jesus brought light to permeate the darkness that had settled in. Joseph saw the light as a spark of hope for his future with Mary. God revealed God's self in human flesh, birthed into this world by an ordinary woman, raised by an ordinary man. With God's help, through the voice of angels, a noble man stepped in to be a father, and a young girl accepted the life inside of her. Their actions speak louder than any words that I know, for through them, God gave the world the most precious gift, the long-awaited Messiah, Emmanuel, God is with us. Each year, as we celebrate the arrival of the Christ child, as we anticipate his coming again, and in the meantime, we rejoice in his name revealed. We rejoice in the name revealed as we know and all we need to know right now is that Jesus is God who saves us, and Emmanuel, God, is with us. Amen.